Okay, so this wedding was planned um, in Oxford University. Um, we chose the couple didn't choose the venue uh, prior to hiring me. They they both lived in Oxford and also work in Oxford. So we did look at venues outside of uh, Oxford, but they really wanted to keep it personal and um, a reflection of them. So Oxford was really home, so it made sense to, to work there. So the ceremony was held in the Bodleian Library um, at the Divinity Schools, which is an amazing building, as you can see. Um, I think they filmed lots of films there, such as Harry Potter and all sorts. It's just such a beautiful building. And really what I loved about this ceremony was that we just kept it quite contemporary with a kind of tradition and old school style in the building already. So very perspex plinths with stocks. Um, and then this was the drinks reception. So we actually did the reception at the exam examination schools, which exterior wise is one of the prettiest buildings, but um, inside isn't so pretty which you'll see in a minute but we did the drinks reception outside um, in a really beautiful marquee um, which was quite simple and tasteful um, the couple were they didn't like anything too brash and too OTT um, and we even even at the very top end we always recycle the flowers so these flowers were in the entrance of the exam schools which you moved back from the ceremony so don't feel that you're being cheap if you're recycling flowers, even if our couples are doing it. So this is the actual main exam school. So normally there's tables laid up in here and all the Oxford University students sit their exams. So it's kind of more of a stressful or um, intimidating venue, if you like. And this was more for something quite fun, obviously, in a, a really special occasion. So. The room isn't the nicest, it's mainly that ceiling, it's pretty grotesque. Anyway, so we obviously draped the whole room and you can see as high as we went. We actually came in the day before, so we were in on the Friday morning very early, we were laying out the tables, um, laying out the drapes rather. And the floral designer was Rob Van Helden, who did most of our weddings last year, not all of them, but most of them. And we work really well with him and we'll talk a bit more about the flowers in a minute. But you can really see the lighting change the room once um, once everything was kind of getting more set and ready. Um, you can spot the lovely Harriet from Mustard Catering. Mustard Catering did the catering. Um, we were lucky enough to be able to bring in a London caterer um, as the couple were real foodies and food was a big, big um, important element to them. The cake was designed by um, a relatively new company on the scene called GC Couture Cakes, who um, we gave the opportunity. And the bride was actually gluten-free, so we had to find a, a really great cake designer that could do totally gluten-free. Um, and they did an amazing job. So the dining room looked really beautiful. Obviously, just really simple, white orchids. Um, and we also did... White orchids were massive last year for some reason. We did loads. And we also... the. Um, the orchid flower trees, which is a Rob Van Helden design, which is just so, even the groom commented and the groom insisted on having them. They're just so, so pretty. He refused not to, to not have them. Um, also within the venue, we couldn't use any actual flames or candles. So all of the candles that you see are actually battery operated. So it just goes to show you don't need to be restricted in that respect. And then obviously, it's always quite fun with a wedding to have more colour as the day goes on and more fun and make it more loud if you like. So obviously there was a nightclub and if in doubt, just do purple and black for your nightclub. It just works really, really well. Never do white draping in a dancing space because it just makes it look very bright. So yeah, it was really classic and really beautiful and it went on for quite uh, early into the next morning. Mm -hmm. 